a very warm welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are staying blessed. I'm Doc Nature Lover. Today's topic, as you guys already know from the thumbnail, is COVID-19 and heart disease. If you are interested in this topic, please keep on watching and do not forget to subscribe down below. Please make sure you subscribe right now. So what is the risk of COVID and heart disease? This message I received so many DMs that to do a video on this topic. I had people who called me and wanted to know my view on this topic because this is something that I had mentioned in one of my videos which I'm going to outline below um, about a study that was done in China in which they saw 40% of the patients had some sort of cardiac arrhythmias. These are abnormal rhythms of the heart. Cardiac arrhythmias are abnormal rhythms of the heart. So after this study, since this was discussed in my channel, a lot of people wanted to know my thoughts and views on this. So this is my humble like trial to explain to you on the as easy and simply as possible. For this, I'm going to take a help of my board because it's just, I feel a picture is worth a thousand words. So in this case, I will be able to show how exactly things are occurring in real time as we fight a pandemic against a hidden enemy, SARS-CoV-2. So cardiac damage in COVID-19 patients, okay? So this study is a very, very recent study. This study came out on Wednesday, 25th of March. I read the study on Wednesday evening after I came back from work. Um, you guys might know that I have um, a huge passion for, um, for reading journals. So I'm an avid journal reader. So I actually have uh, something in my email where it's called journal watch where I get journals and so I can uh, keep myself up to date with cutting edge things happening. So thankfully because my journal watch I was able to see this study which came out. What was the study? I'm going to try to break it down very very basic. This is timeline. So when did the study start? The study started January and it ended in February. This study was done in which group of patients and how many patients were enrolled for the study. We had 416 adults only. Remember adults which are age of 18 and above were taken for the study. Where was this study done? The study was done in the Redmond Hospital of Wuhan, China. This was the University of China. Wuhan University of China conducted the study. What did the study show? The study showed that 19.7% of the patients of these 416, which comes out to 82 patients, they had cardiac injury. And how was the cardiac injury measured? So what is, a, what is cardiac injury? Cardiac injury is anything that causes the cardiac muscles to get inflamed. When you have a heart attack, what do we check in your heart to find out what your heart attack is going on? In real time, we check troponins. So the troponins are checked, serial troponins to see how much damage or myocardial damage is going on. Say the patient is waiting for stent. Um, so as an internist, your job is kind of doing serial troponins. If you see a sudden surge in troponins, you know that this is going in the wrong direction. And that is exactly what troponins are done. Now in this case also to measure the cardiac damage, troponins were used. Troponin levels in these patients were used. Now they also saw that 80% of the patients did not, which is 334 patients, they did not have cardiac injury. So we have a situation in which we have 20% patients with cardiac injury, elevated troponins, and then we have 80% patients without cardiac injury, without elevation of troponins. So now, what is this going to look as? So basically troponin, and as per 
you know, American Heart Association, we have actually troponin as a more specific marker for cardiac damage because, you know, creatine kinase and other en enzymes of the heart are not as good as a marker. Troponin is very, very specific to the heart. So, elevated troponin was seen. So, uh, elevated troponin, as I earlier said, means a heart attack, but it also means a myocardial injury. Myocardium means heart muscle. Myo means muscle, cardio means heart. So, muscle of the heart injury. So, these elevated troponins were markers for myocardial injury or in layman terms, you could say heart damage. Now, this I found that um, by Dr. Aaron uh, Mikolas, he is actually the Associate Director of Preventative Cardiology at John, John Hopkins uh, Medicine at Baltimore. He actually had his take on this study and he actually discussed the study. He was not part of this study which was done but he kind of commented that this was the cardiac injury patients had an increased rate of death or high increased rate of mortality was seen in people who had cardiac injury against patients who did not have cardiac injury. So we had 51% uh, of patients. So say we took the whole number of coronary disease or, or heart disease that we measured by troponin. Out of that, they found that 51% of the patients, they died. And people who did not have my myocardial injury or cardiac injury, which is like 15 patients who died, which is 4.5%. So we have a situation here. We have a situation in which we have found the troponins are high, of course, that I showed on the previous slide. On this slide, what we are trying to see is 51% of the total people who had elevated troponins had a higher mortality rate or they died. And 4.5% of the total population who did not have myocardial, who had myocardial injury, they did not die. So there is a significant increased risk of myocardial injury and COVID-19. And that is what this study kind of looked at. Now, as I was telling you guys, um, at John Hopkins doctor, um, um, he has, he was not part of this study. He actually said that, you know, the cardiac damage can be equivalent to mortality or death that was seen. Now, what other important thing is, you could say that, you know, maybe that those patients were higher or elderly, they had other chronic conditions, hypertension, diabetes, stroke, etc, etc. So, even after you account for age, pre-existing heart condition, diabetes, fourfold increased risk of death was seen when they had cardiac injury which is a significant amount of high rate of death. 30 to 60 percent of the patients had cardiac injury that of those that happened to have coronary artery disease, hypertension and diabetes. These pre-existing people also had a very increased risk of death if they had this. So, what is going on here so we are seeing a uh, increased amount of death in people who had a cardiac injury now we can say that acute inflammatory response due to the infection could cause the blood flow in the heart to go down and perfusion of the heart if it goes down the myocardium is not going to be functioning the same way so it is going to see an increased amount of inflammatory response because the heart is not getting perfused so the acute inflammatory resp re respiratory syndrome due to the uh, infection with SARS-CoV-2 causing ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome causes decreased flow of blood in the heart causing the heart muscles to become inflamed. Now beginning of March this is 
in the first week of March um, on American College of Cardiology um, had already told this on their website that the case fatality rate for cardiac patients was 10.5 percent if they have any cardiovascular disease if their prior history of myocardial infarction or any other heart disease the risk was 10.5 percent if the patient just had high blood pressure the case fatality rate, uh, rate was six percent this came out in the beginning of march by acc now let's talk about flu Right? So Corona, I mean, we see coronaviruses in multiples. I mean, in the last 20 years, I mean, I have seen so many people being affected by coronavirus and they come, I give them medication, they go home after a couple of weeks, they are fine. You know, it didn't affect them. But this unique coronavirus or the novel coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2 virus is kind of unique. Why? Because this is very interesting in new england journal of medicine in 2018 and i'll list below this study this was a very very good study and based on that american college of cardiology american heart association american college of physicians all formulated that people who have flu they have marked increased risk of having a heart attack in the following months so what i mean is say a patient who has had a flu this person's chance of having a heart attack in the coming six months is way higher than a person who did not have a flu so this is interesting because remember flu is also a type of viral disease so why is that there is definitely a relationship that we don't know why flu people have a higher risk of heart disease they have a higher risk of stroke we don't know we what we know is that those people who had flu we should let them know that please get your flu shot you know to protect yourself so the two takeaway points from this study that i'm talking about is the high risk of mortality due to covid 19 this is proven absolutely that people died from and also indicator of future risk this study as i said in new england journal of medicine changed our way we practiced giving flu shots we told people that look you're going to have a high risk of having uh, um, cardiac injury if you don't get a flu shot and people actually started getting a lot more flu shots because of this study came out and i think this was an excellent study i love this study uh, now one thing that's kind of interesting which is uh, another study that was done in lsu or louisiana state university was why less children are getting affected by covid uh, 19 or they are not getting the same response as adults that's kind of interesting right because children they are definitely more prone to get infections and stuff so why is this is happening so what they found at louisiana state university was children have colds they have colds five times in a month sometimes and what does those colds come from these are common colds caused by alpha coronavirus so they already have antibodies to some sort of coronavirus which is protecting them preventing them to get hurt from the SARS-CoV-2 virus they have antibodies they have cross protective antibodies from the multiple colds that they get during the season which is causing decreased amount of cases in young children and I, I think I thought this was a very very interesting study now the other thing is the this is a question that was raised multiple times so I do want to mention this question a lot of people wanted to know Doc, should I take my lisinopril? Because I thought the lisinopril was not a good idea for me to take when I have a possibility of getting SARS-CoV-2. Why is that? Because the ACE is receptor inhibitor in the heart and the lungs. COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 virus gets onto the ACE receptors and attacks the heart and the lungs. However, we do not have any study 
proving that there is an increased rate of death, morbidity or mortality in people who are taking lisinopril or similar medication. So these ACE receptors, remember they are also reduced in people in children. Children do not have so much ACE receptors. So COVID is not getting a chance of getting into those ACE receptors and that's why the rate of the infection is very very low. Now after this whole thing that happened with the lisinopril, people were freaking out, calling, I don't want to take lisinopril, change my medication immediately. Lisinopril, A ACE inhibitors, ARBs are amazing medication, one of the best medication we ever came up because it helps heart failure, it controls your blood pressure so well, it's cheap, it has very little side effects. So we don't want to say to the patient, oh, you know what, I think you should stop lisinopril right now. No, I don't think that's a good idea. And that's the same thing, ACC, AHA and Heart Failure Society of US told us together the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association and Heart Failure Association of US told on March 17th there is no data demonstrating beneficial or adverse effects to people taking ACE inhibitors or ARB. If you ask me right now what should I do? I am telling my patients right now I do not know I'm not going to change your medication unless we are absolutely sure it is beneficial or not beneficial for you because we are following ACC guidelines and being a physician in the United States I myself feel these guidelines are done by people who are very very well learned people they know what they're talking about so there is no need to immediately stop blood pressure pills and increase risk of high blood pressure because remember the new blood pressure medication may or may not work for you and you have taken lisinopril for 20 years so suddenly you're going to stop the medication I don't think so so what we are going to look at is we have a 2.5 million dollar um, loan or study uh, money that is going to be used a very very quick study to find out if S inhibitors or ARB receptors have any increased risk to patients with COVID-19. This study and this money is utilized for this research and this is going to, the results are going to come back very, very soon. And I'm pretty sure I'll be meeting with you guys after a month or so and going over new guidelines by ACC and AHA. I hope you like this content. The all the studies that I discussed about were authentic studies. They either came out in New England Journal of Medicine or Journal of American Medical Association and I can link down below those studies. If you have any questions, please, please do not forget to write below. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give a thumbs down and please let me know your feedback and what kind of things you want to hear from me. I hope you have a blessed day. Take care.